humans evolved for a very different world than the one we find ourselves in today. Our stress system is a marvel of biological engineering. Designed over hundreds of thousands of years as nature's emergency alert for life or death scenarios, like fleeing saber-toothed tigers or charging mammoths, supremely successful for navigating the dangers of the African savanna, and the only reason we are alive today. But in modern times, this same system is catastrophically lost and radically misfiring driving us literally insane at every slightest inconvenience or displeasure. It's simply not calibrated for today's comparatively much safer but noisier world and still thinks our lives are in danger every second of every day. Let's compare your powerful and competent ancestral self with a present day you. Startled by every ping and buzz from your smartphone, in a world once measured by the arc of the sun across the sky, we're now enslaved by the incessant tick of the clock and the relentless demands of a 24-7 always-on culture. The role you once had in your tribe, whether as a hunter or a gatherer, is now a flickering profile on a screen, subjected to the judgments of virtual tribes we neither see or really know. This is far more than just a culture shock for our caveman brains. It's a psychological time warp. We're trapped in a time and place we were never designed to understand, much less thrive in. The result of this is that depression is the number one most common disability today. Facebook. This sounds bleak, but there is a silver lining. Understanding the mechanisms of this ancient stress system is the key to reclaiming our mental well-being. Believe it or not, the very alarm system that once primed us for life or death encounters can be recalibrated. It can become an arsenal of wellness tools, not for dodging saber-toothed tigers, but for navigating the challenges of our day. Dive into these protocols, let's establish a way for us to think about our own stress system so we can at least understand it on a basic level. Firstly, you have two main stress responses. The primary responsibility of your sympathetic stress response is to take energy that's in a storage form and convert it into a usable form. The primary responsibility of your parasympathetic stress response is to act to counterbalance that, to take that usable energy and store it back away for later. Think about your stress system like a bank. Just like your bank stores money in various financial instruments, government bonds, stocks, pension schemes, blah blah, you don't need to know what any of these are, I certainly don't. Your body has its own storage systems. Your lipocytes hold fat and your muscle cells store glycogen. These aren't just idle storages, they are investments in your future well-being. They are there for when you need them and designed for optimal energy management. When you activate your sympathetic stress response, it's like taking an emergency loan from this biological bank. The culprit for drawing these loans? Your hyperactive amygdala, sending stress signals to your adrenal glands, forcing your body to release cortisol and adrenaline, essentially carving out resources from your fat and your glycogen stores. Imagine the bank charging you a withdrawal fee for accessing these funds prematurely. Your body does the same, but the penalty is far worse your own health and well-being. During the stress response, you're attempting to get energy to your muscles. Your heart has to work harder, increasing your blood pressure and straining your arterial walls. It's like those hidden fees you only discover later when banking. You may not feel it in your 20s, but compound those stress withdrawals into your 30s, 40s, 50s and onwards, and you're looking at a massive debt this time paid in deteriorated health and well-being. And here's the kicker. While we don't usually go taking unnecessary loans and fees from the bank, most people in 2023 are perpetually overdrafting their biological accounts. They haven't developed the right stress management protocols, meaning they're continuously making impulsive withdrawals, exhausting their reserves and incurring fees on their overall health without so you can fully appreciate the adverse effects that chronic stress is having. Consider serotonin, the brain's emotional currency, foundational to our sense of well-being. While chronic stress doesn't directly deplete this precious resource, 
it wrecks havoc on its value, much like inflation in an economy. The stress hormone cortisol throws the serotonin system off balance, essentially devaluing your serotonin by altering receptor sensitivity and function. This devaluation can usher in the crippling effects of depression and anxiety, making your emotional currency less potent when you need it most. Now imagine your immune system like a coral reef, teeming with diverse life. Cortisol is an oil spill. A chronic influx of this stress hormone is like continually polluting your body's biological haven. The results are alarming. Your susceptibility to the common cold skyrockets by 300%. The effectiveness of vaccines diminishes by 30%. And even your body's natural ability to heal its wounds decelerates by 40%. Like a reef facing constant oil slicks, your immune system's resilience erodes, putting you at risk for a host of health issues. We previously discussed how increased blood pressure strains your arterial walls. This makes living in a never-ending cycle of stress, like lighting a fuse to a time bomb connected to your heart, increasing your risk of heart attack by 42%. There is good recent research stating that all of these adverse health effects can be mitigated by subscribing to this YouTube channel. Recent research, but we shouldn't really ignore it, so I would go ahead and subscribe just to be sure. I now want to die. I hope it's clear by now that a properly calibrated stress response is essential, not just for survival, but for thriving in a world filled with both opportunities and threats. Really obvious trinity of stress management, sleep, diet, and exercise. Everyone knows these, but ignores them anyway. They just have to be mentioned because you really are crippling any other protocol if these three are not set right first. One simple step I've taken recently to improve my sleep is I bought a Whoop. Even though I know alcohol and other substances directly affects my REM sleep, seeing it on a daily basis has been the right pressure I need just to drink a little bit less. Not cutting it out completely. In a nutshell, good sleep sets the stage for a balanced stress response. A nutritious diet provides the biochemical building blocks to combat stress, and exercise delivers an immediate emotional lift while fortifying your stress defenses for the long haul. It really cannot be overstated how important these three are. But now that we have these three pillars in place, let's get into specific protocols that are much less known, but can be incredibly effective at managing stress on a daily basis. The first is becoming a master of your breathing. By manipulating the very thing that we do every second of every day, you can directly influence your stress levels through conscious activation of the parasympathetic nervous system. Remember para for paralyze. Its role is to counterbalance the sympathetic nervous system, taking out all of these loans and wrecking havoc on our bodies. There are many different breathing techniques like the four, seven, eight method involves inhaling for four seconds, holding the breath for seven seconds, exhaling for eight seconds. Then there's box breathing, which is often used by Navy SEALs and professional athletes. This involves a four second inhale through the nose, four second breath hold, a four second exhale, and then a four second breath hold again. That's your completed box. This next one is popularized by famous neuroscientist, Andrew Huberman, and the one that I use personally in my daily life. It's called the psychological sigh. Here you take one deep inhale through the nose, and then when your lungs are full, do another small inhale immediately after the first. Then exhale slowly through the mouth. These might sound simple, but breathing techniques when practiced and repeated are highly effective at relieving stress and anxiety. Dispelling carbon dioxide and reoxygenating the blood acts as a reset button for your nervous system, activates your sympathetic nervous system, and results in increased alertness and relaxation. This has been replicated in study after study. I will link them all down below for anyone interested in reading further. I urge you to try out all of these and comment below which one works best for you. Besides exercise, my personal biggest one for relieving stress is cold water exposure. I know that this has been overhyped with cold plunges, but you don't need to buy anything. And if you don't have the Irish Sea available to you, a simple cold shower will trigger a flood of neuropinephrine, enhancing focus and lifting mood. It's like a jolt of espresso for your brain, but without the jitters. The shock to the system might feel intense at first, 
but that's your body shifting into a parasympathetic, stress-resilient mode. Numerous studies back its ability to fortify your mental grit. So get cold to get calm. This next one is simply any system you like that limits your time on social media. People feel a lot of guilt for getting pulled into social media, but they really shouldn't. Silicon Valley pays billions per year, hires the smartest minds, and employs all known addictive tactics to suck you into continuous doom scrolling. This isn't about willpower because it's a stacked fight. This is why you need a system in place which does the willpower heavy lifting for you every single day. For me, I use Forest that just simply locks me out on my phone during my work hours, but really any system works. It just needs to be there every single day. This next one might sound fluffy, but I promise can be the most powerful of all. Practicing gratitude engages the brain's prefrontal cortex, directly influencing neurotransmitter production effectively ramping up the release of dopamine, serotonin, neurotransmitters crucial for mood regulation. Clinical research has demonstrated that consistent gratitude exercises can lower cortisol levels by as much as 23%, providing a biochemically measurable reduction in stress. Think of this as recalibrating your neurochemical balance to build stress resilience. This next one is about having a robust social circle, which isn't just good for Friday night plans, it's actually a life extender. Studies show that people with larger social networks often live longer, but it's not just about quantity, but the quality of those relationships also matter a lot. Your own perception of your social circle plays a crucial role in your well-being. If you feel supported and valued, your body actually experiences less stress and you're better equipped to handle life's curveballs. It's like having a safety net made by human connections, offering not just emotional but physiological benefits. Coupling with chronic debilitating stress, talk therapy can be a lifesaver. Cognitive behavioral therapy, for example, is a gold standard that helps reframe our negative thought patterns affecting your stress levels. Sessions with a qualified therapist offer a safe space to dissect your stressors, empowering you to develop actionable coping mechanisms. Once again, studies have consistently shown that talk therapy can result in measurable reductions in stress hormones and improvements in overall mental well-being. I do really believe, and the evidence supports the fact, that even though our stress system did evolve for a very different time period, there are effective protocols for managing the stress that the 24-7 rat race craziness that 2023 places on us and that it's imperative to our health we all develop our own protocols for effectively managing stress. If anyone has anything that works for them that I didn't mention, I would really love to hear them below. Thank you so much for surviving to the end of this video. I've recently gone full time with YouTube, so your support in the form of a like and subscribe is massively appreciated. Share this video with anyone you think might benefit from it. It really supports me in making the best possible neuroscience content. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.